Today is uh, March the 2nd, and I wanted to say good morning to everybody in India. I am in India. I came yesterday from Canada. Uh, not many people know about this. Uh, it was a sudden visit. I'm going to spend a few weeks here. Uh, and I'm in uh, New Delhi at present. I'm in Connaught Place. People who are in New Delhi, of course, they have an option to meet me if they want to. Uh, I'm uh, in uh, right in Connaught Place on Barakamba Road. Uh, that's where I am. And uh, I'm glad to meet uh, uh, one of one of the uh, person who was on the YouTube looking at some videos, uh, and his name is Jesu Draz, and he's talking to me from Maharashtra. I welcome Jesu to my show, and uh, you're welcome to ask questions. I'll try to answer those questions as best as I can. Uh, good morning, Jesu. Good morning. Uh, so basically, uh, thanks to you, I finally okay. got a way to get into Canada. Uh, I had my experiences uh, with a lot of consultants earlier, and I spent some money also on that. Okay. Because you fake that you will be able to do band 9 law, band 10 law. But age yeah. is also a factor. You have said that many consultants will be able to do it, and you have also invested your money. How much money have you invested? Almost 40,000. Then I learned my lessons. So <laughs> I was a little smart. So I said, uh, this is fake. Hai. Because the way they treat you after IELTS, then I understood, oh, boss, uh, this is basically a money making machine. Ke IELTS mein paisa nikalo, uh, okay. Some preparation, kara bol ke. then after that, uh, they are not bothered. Then they say, PNP mein ho jayega, aap 67 lao, 68 lao, uh, woes, whatever. Jesu, you are very good, you are very good, you are very mature, and you have seen the world. Who gave you 40,000 rupees? Who gave you the money? See, basically, uh, uh, initially, I was... Uh, I was Miss Canada, ke mein, I, I never had that information. So I just attended a webinar and all, live. <coughs> so I went there, basically, then they enrolled me for the uh, entire thing. Then they took my profile. Then they said that they made a mask on the profile and said that I'll get 170000 $170, salary and all looking at my profile. Sorry, sorry. If I, if I want to interrupt you, I'll take my hand so that you know I want to interrupt you. Where company, company, uh, company was the company? Where were the people? Where were Canada's lawyers? Where were the people? No, this is a Delhi-based company. Hai. And uh, basically, I don't want to take name, but... Uh, it is run by uh, two guys. Uh, they say they are ex IITs and I am. I don't know whether they are really. Chalo, koi baat Chai Delhi ke the, chai kahin ke bhi the. People from IIT, I am. They are running a Canada immigration firm and trying to do some uh, do this business. Maine apko, main apko bataunga aur batana chahta hu sabko ke ye kahi baar maine videos mein bataya hai ki Canada ka immigration koi bhi agar aap file karte hain kisi bhi third party ke through jaise agar aap nikalte kisi ke through karte hain so they must be a lawyer or a license holder in canada agar wo nahi hai to uh, you know ultimately this is what will happen you will be frustrated aur kuch na kuch galat advice ho jayegi wo paise bhi chale jayenge so jab aap jaise log bhi dhoka kha sakte hain to jo jo log itne padhe likhe nahi hai wo wo kaise ho jayenge aapke bare mein aapke bare mein mere ko aapke bare mein mere ko sirf itna pata hai ki you are working you have a good job you are a vice president hr you are hr manager somewhere uh, yeah, sir. Uh, basically, uh, not only I am a uh, business head and HR manager in a company, but uh, I am also a part of that company. <clears throat> I am a stakeholder. Let me let me just let me just uh, give you a summary of what I know, and then you can correct me. And you are close to thirty nine years old. You are a vice president in HR, as you say, the partner in the company also, and you have a uh, bachelor's of engineering uh, and total seventeen years experience in Canada. And your education, everything is validated by Canada. Your wife is also uh, has an advanced degree in computer science uh, and uh, seven years experience in software. I think maybe teaching as a college professor. Correct? Is my is my understanding okay for so far? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. And uh, let, let me just ask you pointed questions so that we can we can summarize this in in good time. Uh, you you have done your CRS code in Express Entry. What is your uh, what is your uh, score? What score came out? Uh, it was coming around 380. 380. So 380 is not is not very uh, very high at all. 
So uh, your question to me is that if you cannot go as an express entry applicant or through maybe Java for a PNP applicant, how else can you go? And you, you suggested that uh, perhaps uh, you can go on a study visa or your wife can go on a study visa, is that right? Yes, sir. After that, I think this mail was a little old. After that, I given my academic also. Okay. okay. So I got uh, band seven in that. Uh, uh, my father was not well, so I could not prepare for my house, but still I got band seven. And uh, I applied to uh, around seven, eight colleges in Ontario and even Alberta and all. Uh, even I'm waiting for uh, offer letter from uh, two universities. So right now the situation is I got one offer letter from Cambrian College. Okay, uh, me. I've got to stop you. I have to stop you. Just to, just to economize on the time that we have, I want to stop you. Just listen me out first, all right? Just without interrupting, just listen me out, and then uh, then maybe it will uh, help solve some of the questions. So, in my in my previous videos, I've always uh, maintained that uh, people who are mature like you, who have advanced qualifications and advanced uh, degrees, they should not go to Cambrian College. They should not go to junior colleges. These colleges are meant for youngsters, teenagers, you know, people who are 20, 25 in that range. Uh, uh, and with no experience. If you are going to Cambrian College or smaller college, of course, they'll give you the admission, but the chances of visa goes down. I mean, it's not uh, it's not very really easy for you to establish that you have a genuine intention of studying, so it's it's not going to be beneficial. Uh, I'll give you some four points uh, so that you can, you can understand and self-evaluate on your own without even going to a consultant. So the chances of visa for mature people like you for study visa is based on whether you go to university or college. University has a higher chances of, this is a government stats, not me. The university has a higher approval rate of study visa, not the college, so that's one thing. Number two, you already have a bachelor's of engineering and chemical engineering from Shivaji University. You should go for a master's program, like a M MBA or HR management or master's of engineering, something, a degree program, like a two-year degree program from a good university. That will, these two points, uh, university program, uh, and and a master's program, they will immediately uh, accelerate your your chances of you know getting the study visa. Number three, that your English should be high, even higher. I, seven is not. Uh, I'm not impressed with seven. I think you should. You, uh, somebody like you, you should be able to get maybe eight, eight point five or nine or something. So if you have these three factors, the chances of study visa are, are, are clearly very high. The number four requirement is that you must have money. So. If you are looking to take care of you, yourself and your wife, you have any children? How many children do you have? Uh, I have two daughters, sir. Okay, how old are they? Uh, elder one is around 11 years and uh, younger one is two years. Okay, so if you want the whole family to go to Canada and you are going uh, on a study visa, you want the wife to go with you and children to go with, go with you. So let me just recapitulate what we have. So you need to go to a university for a higher degree course, or like a master's degree in MBA, HR management, or maybe in, even chemical engineering or something uh, related to your job, related to your background. So that's number one, uh, uh, university and the master's degree. Number three is you need a good score in English. You need, uh, I, I want you to have, you know, I, if, you, if you work hard, you, you, you probably can get 8.5 or so, all right? And number four requirement is the money because if you are taking the whole family, you need a budget of at least fifty thousand Canadian dollars plus. You know, you need close to about uh, twenty thousand dollars for first year fees, maybe ten thousand dollars for GIC, and then additional money to support your spouse and and uh, and your two two dependent kids. So if if you can arrange fifty thousand dollars liquid cash, if you have this money savings something, uh, and you have the rest of the three factors, you'll get the study visa. Otherwise, you will falter. Maybe they will refuse. Uh, the visa in the first attempt, and then you'll have to reevaluate, uh, you reapply again, again. Uh, have you had any visa for U.S., Canada, uh, U.S., or Australia, or New Zealand, or some other country before? Have you been rejection, or you have any travel, no history? No. No, no, sir. Okay. No. So just just do these these four things, and and you will be successful in getting the study visa. Sure, sir. So now my query is anyway, uh, why I applied to all the small colleges because. Uh, being at 40, I was little spectacle whether I'll get uh, university admission and all. What mistake I did was basically instead of uh, going for all September intake, for this particular college, 
I might have clicked for May intake also. So now they replied with the positive thing. That is one thing. And I'm waiting for uh, University of Windsor and other universities uh, reply. So my uh, now question for, uh, from your side is like, basically there are two, three things. One is for uh, this funds purpose, <clears throat> I have one plot, I'll be selling that. So basically that will be around 40 lakhs. I think that will cover my, uh, this thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my budget for you is about $50,000. So it's close to about uh, 35 lakh rupees, I think. Uh, um, yeah, no, I'm sorry, it's 50. Yeah, close to about 25 lakh rupees. Okay, fine. So that will cover, I think, and that is acceptable if I uh, prove that uh, this is from uh, selling my own property. Yeah, I, I always prefer money should be old funds, not like you, that you sell the house today and you start the visa tomorrow. That does not look good at all. I mean, it has to be a stable, uh, consistent liquid liquid cash balance in your account for at least six months or maybe a year. Uh, that is what I prefer. That is what the visa officers also prefer. So uh, if you are trying to apply for September session and if you're applying to do in Ju uh, you know June or July, you have some months to to liquefy your assets and put this in account so that they, they are maintained in your bank statement for some time. Okay, and one more thing I want to ask is uh, basically, see, I have a strong uh, ITR uh, filing from last 10 years. Yeah. Okay. How, much is, your, how much is your gross income uh, per year in ITR? Uh, it was uh, between 25 to 30. 25 lakhs? Yeah. Okay, that's, 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 a, good, uh, that's a good idea. So, uh, yeah, basically because of my father's hospitalization, I don't have anything left in saving as such. That's why I'm selling uh, this uh, land for uh, visa purpose or anyway traveling purpose. <clears throat> so, good. so good, we have we have control over the finances. You are waiting for University of Windsor and under, another university. So I my, my suggestion is forget about Cambrian College, forget about any of those colleges. Just look for University of Windsor. If you get in the University of Windsor, uh, any master's degree program, I think uh, you have a strong chance of going to Canada soon uh, in the September session. Okay, so one more thing. Uh, see, now when I apply for this visa, anyway, for spouse visa, I'll be going through you only. So okay. before spouse visa, should I go ahead with uh, my own uh, visa through this SDS category or should I oh, uh, my, my My policy is very clear. My policy is absolutely clear. I. If I have to do the case, I mean, typically I don't take all cases, but I tell people to do it on their own. I mean, I recommend people to apply as a family, like husband, wife, children all together. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's no reason why the whole family will not get the visa. I have so many examples and, you know, from even from other countries uh, where uh, we have uh, maintained that the whole family will go and the visa officer has consented, the visa officer given the visa for the whole family. So that's what I recommend to you. And we have examples from some clients also testimonials on YouTube on the same channel uh, from uh, you know South India, uh, especially where they got the visa uh, collectively. So yeah. my, my, my thing is, my thing is, you you get the admission, you get the money in order, you get the high English. Uh, the whole family is going to go together. It's, it's either the whole family or nobody. Okay. Okay. So uh, there is no point applying uh, alone, and then uh, no, uh, it's fine. a waste of time. I, I I don't agree with uh, many consultants and lawyers. Also, people who maintain that uh, you know husband should uh, do it independently, separately, and then wait for the family to follow. And I and I and I and I don't see the logic behind it, and they are not be able to convince me otherwise. Okay, fine. So when I apply in combine also, it will be SDS uh, category or normal category? SDS is a is SDS is a fast track way of uh, going to the study visa based on what you have. If you have the finances, if you have the English, and those you know those things, uh, and if you have prepaid the tuition fees and stuff, that is called SDS. Uh, otherwise, I mean, uh, you know, the, the the criteria for visa. Uh, visa issuance for study visa is pretty much the same. They have to be satisfied with your with your intention, with the SOP or finances and other things, relevance and stuff. SDS is a way of, you know, uh, fast tracking uh, some applications which they think, uh, you know, satisfy the requirement. You know, somebody who has already prepaid the fee, somebody who has a high English and so. So SDS or non-SDS, it hardly matters to me. What matters to me is what is the relevance? What is your SOP? 
uh, are you a genuine student are you trying to masquerade as a student but you are not that's what uh, you know that's what is the assessment of the study visa profile okay so now uh... Other thing I want to know is documentation part. Like uh, if I want to show strong connection to my home country, yeah. even uh, me being a director or partner of the company, that will help. Uh, I need to take some particular documents from the company for that. Yeah, so uh, the, the connection to this is a very uh, often asked uh, question to me about connection to country of residence. The connection is very simple, your job. If you have a job, you're getting a salary, you have the money savings, you have salary slips, and you also partner in a company. That is the connection that we're talking about. Whatever you have, you present, and we are not lying. We are truthful, we are accurate. Whatever we are showing, we, we have is what we are showing. And that is your connection to uh, your con your ties to country of residence. And plus, uh, my whatever properties I have, I need to show that record well, also. Look, I'm, I'm not concerned about property at all. We are concerned about finances. You know, a student is going to Canada to undertake certain finances to pay the tuition fees and living expenses and support children and wife. We are looking at finances, whether you have property or not. We don't care. Okay. If okay. you have, if you have, if you have converted your property into fine into current cash and liquid finances, and that will take care of your GIC. Take care of your prepaid tuition. That's that's wonderful. I mean, uh, we don't care whether you have uh, you have hundred crores of uh, you know property sitting hiding somewhere. Who who cares? Okay, fine. So uh, that will be an additional thing if I'm uh, attaching my pro property document also. Okay, fine. And uh, okay. What you else? May, I I I I don't think you know. I have never seen. I have never seen uh, any. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong. I've never seen any student visa file decided based on property yes or no okay okay no uh, it doesn't come in strong ties with the home country no absolutely not i have seen so many examples of professionals and even is officers and other people who went to canada on certain pretexts and never came back even though they had property here so property is not a uh, property is not any factor to to decide on the on the bona fides of a study visa application okay okay Fine, sir. Fine, then uh, those are my, my doubts. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see. Uh, I'll wait for these colleges reply or universities reply. Once I get something uh, concrete, I'll, I'll send you a mail. Then I can start filing the uh, visa for entire family. You are, you are my guest. You, you may or not. I mean, that is that is your decision. But, you know, I guess uh, you are smart. You are educated. You know what, what is the best to do. Uh, my job is to give people like you accurate answers and answers based on experience answers based on what I see what I observe and what has worked in the past and that's all it is uh, and that's all uh, you know I have uh, you know, to say to, to most people on study visa application but I'm very glad that you call this is 9 52 a.m. Uh, at present and uh, uh, one last thing. Uh, see by by any chance if I'm not getting any university uh, um, Offer letter, and I'm getting a college in Alberta or a college in Ontario. Where should I go for? Uh, I prefer that you go to Alberta for two reasons. I I live in Alberta because I like Alberta. Ontario is a big uh, <laughs> province, and there's there are already too many uh, students, Indian descent and other students, you know, congregating there. There's too much of congestion. Uh, second, uh, Alberta is uh, quite condu conducive to. Uh, um, uh, the provincial nominee programs for student based uh, program, you know, student and study and then later on. So Ontario, there's not much enough uh, choices for students. So uh, it's a no brainer uh, for student immigration, student led immigration. Uh, Alberta will rank uh, higher than Ontario anytime. OK, fine, sir. Uh, that was my thinking also. But uh, anyway, uh, it's a long wait for Alberta colleges. I'm not getting a reply fast from them. So let's see. Yeah, yeah. As I think things are a little uh, things are a little tight in in uh, in the entire process and system right now. The immigration, the queues and waiting time, and colleges are not working, uh, you know, on full on board. Uh, many things are because of coronavirus. They are they are kind of you know uh, you know kind of uh, spread out and they they're spread thin right now. So that's what is happening. But uh, hey. Uh, I thank you very much for calling, and I I wish that uh, you have uh, uh, answers to.
some basic questions and that will put your mind to ease. And then you have a clear direction how to move forward uh, and then take some concrete concrete steps. You live in uh, Bombay, Bombay, Pune, where are you? Pune, Pune. Sir. Yeah. Pune is a, is a fine uh, city. I was there at least twice in the in the past a few years. I think in 2016 or 17, I don't remember. I was there twice or maybe three times as well. And it's a great green city. Uh, a lot of uh, high tech uh, offices, high tech uh, people there just near the near the airport, Vimanagar. That's what it's called, right? Vimanagar. Yeah. And uh, Symbiosis uh, University and, and Institute. Uh, I, I always loved uh, Pune and the, the people are very educated there actually on an average. Uh, Pune, Hyderabad, Bangalore, these are upcoming high tech cities. And, you know, I had a good time, uh, good time in Pune when I was there. So, yeah. I, so I, I, uh, Yes. Yeah. I, I missed I missed going to the I missed going to the the uh, the ashram of Osho and I'm a great fan of Osho, by the way. Uh, I, I I always wanted to go visit, but I never could find time to go to visit the Osho's commune and uh, mm. maybe one of these days. Sure, sir. Welcome. Yeah, if I'm there, I'll be glad to meet you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> So thank you very thank much you. for calling Yesu and I wanted to pa pass a message to uh, all the people who are watching uh, this. I am in India, I'm in New Delhi and uh, if you want to contact me, same same process, my Canadian WhatsApp number, I don't have a WhatsApp number on my Indian number and I don't want to interest you because it will you know, create some duplication. So my uh, Canadian number uh, plus one uh, dash seven eight zero seven zero seven four three one. that's the number to use, all right? Thank you. Yes, good luck for your future endeavor. Good day, sir. Okay.